Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm here today to talk about stereotypes. Contrary to popular belief, nobody has, nobody has to teach us how to stereotype anybody. It's something our brains do all by themselves because they're trying so hard to oversimplify our world, and this leads to sometimes hatred and literally sometimes warfare between groups of people, all because our brains are trying to make life easier for us. Let's talk about how this happens. First thing we need to talk about are in-groups. An in-group is any group that we feel as if we belong to that group. We identify with it. Anytime we say we or us, that's an in-group. And belonging to an in-group is pretty awesome. It gives us a sense of belonging, of having a place in the world. We raise our opinion of other members of our group. If you think of yourself as a member of your group and you think of me as a member of that group, your opinion of me will go up even if we've never met just because I'm part of that group. Oddly, we also think about and notice the differences between ourselves. We think of ourselves as distinct and unique individuals who all just happen to share something good in common, which is belonging to the group. In-groups make us feel like part of humanity. They make us feel great, and frankly, it is wonderful. Unfortunately, there's a downside to this, because anytime you have an us, you have to have them. Those people, the outsiders, the in-group, sorry, the out-group. Here's the thing. We don't raise our opinion of members of the out-group. In fact, we lower it. Just knowing that you belong to a group that I don't belong to lowers our opinion of you. Also, when we look at members of the out-group, we notice the similarities between them. We start to think of them as interchangeable, as essentially all the same, as a faceless blob, so to speak. In a worst-case scenario, when our group turns inward and re restricts and reduces interaction with members of the out-groups, we will actually dehumanize them and conclude that they're not really human in the first place. Now, dehumanization is terrible for a variety of reasons, but one of those reasons is because it becomes possible to do terrible things to people if we don't think of them as fully human in the first place. This us versus them, in-group, out-group dynamic happens any time we divide ourselves into groups, even if we know that it's random. If I were to divide this room right now and start referring to everybody on this side of the room as group A, everybody on this side of the room as group B, if I keep reinforcing that by asking questions or simply referring to those groups, you know, group A over here, blah, 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 group B, this and that. By the time I'm done with my talk, many of the people in this room will have started to raise their opinion of people who sat on the correct side of the room, meaning the side they're on, and unfortunately, started to lower their opinion of members of the out group, the other side of the room, people who sat on the wrong side of the room. It's just that simple. That's all it takes. And it seems to be hum universal throughout humankind as well. We have a natural tendency to favor us over them. Why do we do this? Well, as I already said, our brain is trying to simplify things. This leads us to make a series of cognitive mistakes that all wind up with negative effects. The first and most important of these is conservation error. Conservation error is basically our brain taking things and lumping them into categories so that we don't have to think anymore. It's literally a way to avoid thinking. Uh, we put things into a category and then they all become one. So for example, let's say a dog bites me or even just scares me when I'm a child. And so for the rest of my life, I'm afraid of dogs because I believe that all dogs are scary and dangerous and want to bite me. I don't have to, when I meet a dog, I don't have to evaluate it as an individual. I don't have to pay attention to its behavioral cues or know anything about its temperament or history. All I have to know is that it's a dog. All dogs want to bite me, so I avoid all dogs. The same thing happens with, you know, small children and vegetables. They taste a vegetable they don't like. They decide that vegetables are gross. And from that point on, good luck getting them to eat a vegetable. And... I could tell from a couple of chuckles in the room, some of you have small or have had small children at home. Uh, unfortunately, this is not something that only small children do, and we don't just do it with dogs and vegetables. We do it with human beings as well. So a dating partner lied, therefore all women are liars, or men can't be trusted. We catch a student cheating on a test, so students are cheaters. Or we have an interaction with somebody who has very obviously different political beliefs than our own, and they're rude to us, so those people are rude. This is what leads directly to the creation of stereotypes and prejudices. A stereotype is just a set of beliefs about an entire category of people. And the prejudice is just the attitudes we develop about those people based on those stereotypes. Stereotypes and prejudices are literally the living embodiment of conservation error. Conservation error causes us to create these stereotypes 
and eventually convinces us that they are real and true. This then leads to the next cognitive mistake we make, which is collective liability. Collective liability is when we assume that every member of a group is responsible for the behavior of any member of the group. So, for example, do you remember that teacher that punished the whole class for something you didn't do when you were a kid? And do you remember how you burned with moral outrage when that happened? It's a common scenario. That's how I know it applies to at least some of the people listening to me right now. Here's the thing. It felt unfair because it was unfair. Collective liability always means punishing individual people for things that they did not do. That's collective liability. We only do this to outgroups. We don't do it to our own group because remember, when we're thinking about the in-group, we think of ourselves as separate, distinct, and unique individuals. Why should I feel guilty or badly about something that some other individual did? But when we think about the outgroups, oh, now it makes sense to us because you're all the same and you're all interchangeable. Of course you should all feel guilty and apologize for something somebody else did. In fact, you should consider yourself lucky that you aren't all being punished for it. Collective liability makes sense to us because we only do it to those people, to outsiders, to members of the outgroup. This is what leads to gang violence and frankly quite a bit of few wars in history. Somebody from that group did something to somebody from our group, so we need to do something to somebody from that group. Somebody from that territory lobbed a rocket into our territory, we need to drop a bomb on their territory. The thing you need to understand about the collective liability is we genuinely don't care if the people that are being injured and killed are the ones who are actually responsible for the behavior we're avenging because in our minds, all of those people are interchangeable, so we can avenge the behavior of anybody from that group by avenging ourselves on anybody else from that group. They're all the same. That would be bad enough, but we also then engage in something called the fundamental attribution error. It's called the fundamental attribution error because it's so common. We all do this to a greater or lesser extent. The short version is, anybody from our in-group who does anything bad or negative we explain it away. We attribute it to external causes. They did what they did because they had no choice. You know, Bob wasn't driving because he's a selfish jerk. Bob, or, sorry, speeding. Bob was speeding because he was late for a very important meeting. But we don't do that with members of the outgroup. In fact, we make the exact opposite mistake. We assume that their behavior is driven by their inner character. So that person who's a member of your group they weren't speeding because they were late for an important meeting. They were speeding because they're a selfish jerk who doesn't care about the safety of others. We literally misjudge everybody because of the attribution error. Because social scientists have known for decades, human behavior is a complex interaction between internal factors, like personality and temperament, and external factors, the situation, the circumstances, etc. But when someone from our own group does something negative, we ignore the internal factors and attribute it entirely to external factors, which is always wrong, and when somebody from the outgroup does something, we ignore the external factors and attribute it completely to the internal factors, which is always wrong. So we're literally misjudging everybody. So to summarize, our brains trick us into creating stereotypes and reinforcing them and convincing them so ourselves that they're not only useful, that they're true and accurate. So what can we do about this? I have a bold suggestion. Are you ready? Let's stop. Let's stop doing it. Because everything I just spoke about is something that we do, and we don't have to do those things. This is all in our heads. This is all a matter of perception, not reality. We choose who we identify with, which means we choose who we think of as our in-group. Well, the problem with that is how we define our in-groups. Racists divide the entire world into us and them based on the pigmentation of people's skin. Sexists do the same thing with gender. Others use their religious or political perspective to divide the entire world into us and them. Anytime we create an us, we create them, but we don't have to do that. We don't have to think about shallow, superficial things like skin color or gender as the most important things about people. If we just focus on people as individuals, then we can avoid this. We choose to lump people into categories in order to make our lives easier. Conservation error is what our brains do on autopilot. We don't have to do it. We just have to remind ourselves over and over and over again, this is an individual person that I'm looking at or talking to or thinking about and choose to not lump them into a category with other people that we think fit them. We tend to focus on the traits that we think are important and ignore the ones we don't. 
And this is where it gets a little bit odd, because throughout all of history, we focused almost entirely on shallow and superficial things. I have no idea how anybody ever originally came to the conclusion you could tell everything you need to know about somebody's inner character by the pigmentation of their skin, but there you have it. It's not somebody's age or race or weight or ancestry or ethnicity that matters most. It's who they are as a person, and we just need to remind ourselves of that. We don't have to do this. Now, the good news is, and the reason I'm talking about all of this today, being aware of these things is enough to help us avoid them. And the other good news is if you're listening to me right now, there's a good chance you're the kind of person who really, truly wants to learn and to grow and apply these things and become a better person. And we all can. That's the great news. Bad news is it's a little easier to say than to do. It's pretty easy for me to say, let's stop doing it. It's harder to actually stop doing it. But I do have a practical, actionable suggestion, something we can all start doing today that will help. And that is to refer to everybody as people or human beings. Because the words we use matter. They have an impact on how we think about things. For example, fish. Would you rather have orange roughy for dinner tonight or slime head? I know which one I'd pick. Here's the problem. Those are two labels, two names for the exact same fish. When we call it orange roughy, it sounds pretty good. I mean, honestly, talking about it right now is making me a little bit hungry. I like fish. I'd be happy to have orange roughy for dinner tonight. Do I want slime head for dinner? No. I do not want slime head for dinner. I would like to avoid slime head at all possible costs. I'd like to stay as far away from slime head as possible. The labels we apply to things matter. When you call the fish orange roughy, it sounds delicious. When you call it slime head, it sounds disgusting to us. The labels we use matter because they have a direct impact on how we think about things, on how we perceive them. And that's true for people as well. As soon as we start to use generic or dehumanizing labels for an entire category of people, we have stopped thinking about them as individuals and started to think about them as one of those people. So let's stop using those labels. Literally, refer to everybody as people or human beings. The things we need to keep in mind here is there's no such thing as an accurate stereotype. There's no statement anyone can make that applies equally to an entire category of people. And more importantly, any statement we make about an entire category of out-group members is going to also be true for some of the members of our in-group. Our in-group is not loaded with saints. We are all human beings. Some are great, some are not. Let's look at some of these common stereotypical statements if we just substitute the words people or human. All people are lazy. Well, obviously that's not true. You can't trust humans. Well, clearly you can trust some human beings. People are terrible drivers. Well, obviously not all people are terrible drivers. My personal favorite, human beings aren't like us. They're different. <laughs> these statements all look obviously false and obviously incorrect because stereotypes only make sense to us when we apply them to outsiders, when we apply them to people that we already think of as interchangeable. And we don't have to do that. The reason why these statements don't make sense when you use words like people and human is because stereotypes don't make sense. We need to remind ourselves on a regular basis that we are all human beings, every one of us. What that means is if we think of people or humans as our in-group, then there really is no out-group. It's when we start distinguishing ourselves from each other that the whole in-group, out-group dynamic starts to matter. If we can avoid creating the out-group in the first place, we don't even really have to worry too hard about avoiding collective liability or conservation error because those only happen once we've already started to think of people as them or those people. If we call everybody people, then everybody's in our in-group. Second thing we need to constantly remind ourselves of is that we are all individuals. No two people are exactly alike, let alone two million or two billion. We need to remind ourselves on a regular daily basis. All people are unique, and most of them are good. Let's try hard to be the good ones. Thank you.